if you're creating a game, at some point, your game will have to uh, do stuff. Player clicks a button, you better open a door. Player fires the gun, you better spawn in new guards. If an event happens, you better call a function. To do this, you will need references. To open the door, you need a reference to the door. Door.open, or something like that. This is a foundation of game dev. It's a foundation of all software, but it's most important and complicated in game dev. So it's kind of a shame that we don't teach it. Not as game dev. The kind of reference handling we teach is programming related. We rely on a programming centric approach to understand references. This is not suitable. I'm a programmer as my day job, I've got nothing against it, but it's just not suitable here. We're getting more and more people coming into game development who don't want to learn to program. So relying on a programming solution to a very fundamental game dev element is doing them a disservice. Similarly, a lot of programmers take a very brute force approach that goes around the engine instead of using it. So that's also going to be a huge pain in the butt if you're trying to get into game dev without knowing how to program. Let me give you an example. You don't know how to program. This theoretical you doesn't know how to program. Uh, you add a bunch of cool stuff that you found to the game that you're creating. Uh, this enemy knows how to fight you already. It knows how to track the player down and fight them. And we've got some traps, and the traps would go off and kill whoever tripped them. And your idea here is, I'm going to create a level where when the player enters this particular room, an enemy will run forward into a trap and explode. And then the player will be like, oh no, this level has traps in it, and they can be used to kill the enemy. Exciting. But how do you tell the enemy to walk forward when the player enters the room? Well, here's some enemies. And let's say that we're trying to figure out how to make them walk forward when the player enters the room. So we do a bunch of tutorials. We look them up, and the tutorials are like, oh, use ray casting, use a custom AI state, use a specialized new subclass that just walks forward. It's like, oh my gosh, these are really complicated. Well, they're the wrong answer. They're not answering the question you were trying to ask. Um, and that's because you, the theoretical you, didn't know enough about how Unreal works to actually ask the question you wanted to ask, so they're answering a different question. If you would like to get a reference to a specific enemy in your game level so that you can do some logic to them, well, I'll show you. This is how you do it. Now that you have a reference to that specific enemy, you can code up whatever cost custom logic you would like. Yeah. Yeah, you see, a big part of a game engine's responsibilities is keeping track of your stuff. And it does that by putting stuff into contexts. The level is a context. Everything in this level is in the same big bucket, and they can all see each other. And so when I click on something, what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, game engine, in reference to this particular person on this particular level, and the game engine outlines her in yellow and says, yep, what about her? Normally, we use this technique to set the various parameters of that particular object or character. But it's trivial to use this to create long-term links to and from this particular asset. Let me show you how. This is an incredible demo of an advanced technique. If you click on this button, a door opens and closes. I'm gonna knock their socks off at GDC next year, I'm sure. So obviously this is a really half-assed setup, but in order to do this, what you need is a link to the on-clicked event for this button, so that this can happen when you click it. And you also need a link to the door, so that this button can trigger that door. And basically, you just need to draw a line between them. And that's exactly what you can do. You can't do it in this view because this view doesn't have that functionality. But if we were to pop on over into the level blueprint, oh my, that looks like exactly what I just described. Here is a hard-coded link to the on-clicked event for the door button. Here's a hard-coded link to a specific door. And here's a, excuse me, here's a link to the toggle function. 
So what's going on here is that this is the level blueprint. Anything in the level is in context to the level blueprint and can simply be added to the blueprint. How? Well, I already showed you. You select whatever you want to add to the level blueprint, and then you right click and there it is. Oh, did you want a specific event rather than that particular uh, reference just generalized? Yeah, there we are. Now, if we were to click on Juliet, the door would open. Really, it's that, it's that easy. I mean, I say it's that easy. You do have to set up the on-clicked functionality. I have a different video on that. But once the events are working, you can hook them together like this. It's very, very straightforward. Now, a lot of people are going to tell you that you shouldn't use the level blueprint. I think they're overstating things, but there are a lot of situations where you probably don't want to use a level blueprint. So what's an, what's, what's an alternative? Well, one alternative is that we could turn our door button left into a custom class that can toggle whatever door we would like. Now to do that, we select the door button pusher that we would like to turn into a custom class, and we click here, and boom, it's a custom class. You can look up a tutorial on this specifically if you don't know how to do this specifically. I've already done it. It's over here. Boom, and you're probably thinking, wait, is this a different tab? It looks pretty similar, doesn't it? As you may have noticed, the main difference between these two tabs is the word level. This isn't a level blueprint, it is a class blueprint. This is not in the context of the level, it's in the context of the door button pusher class. We can still create a hard-coded link to the on-clicked event, because it's our event in the first place. But we can't create a hard-coded link to the door. This part's different. And the reason for that is because there's no door. We're not in the level. We're not in the same context as the door. The door does not exist to us. So instead, we've created a variable called door to open and set it up as being a door. And it can be any door we want. We can set it as whatever door we plan to set it as. But we can't set it from here because, again, we're not in the level. We're in the context of the class in general. This does not represent a specific thing in a specific level. This represents every door button pusher there will ever be in any level. And because of that, we can't point to a specific door in a specific level. Not if we're this class, but we can do it if we're a version, an instance of this class. Now to do that, we can simply drag the door button pusher, here it is, into a level. Boom! Here is a specific door button pusher. And that variable, why? It's right here. And we can just select one of the other objects in our level, which is exactly what we've done. See? Because these objects are all in the same context, the door and the button, they're in the same context, they can see each other. And we can either set them up on the level context itself, you know, the level blueprint itself, or we can point to we can point them at each other using variables. Because they are in the same context, it's very easy to point them at each other and to link them up. If you are creating simple games and you don't want to do a lot of coding, this is the majority of what you're going to be doing. You're going to be selecting things as variables, uh, you know, you know, as a, an entry in a variable like this, and you're going to occasionally be doing some custom logic in the level blueprint. But things aren't always this simple. There are a lot of times when, uh, yeah, things aren't going to be in the same context. They're just not. And at times like those, you're going to have to go fishing. Now, chances are you've already seen this happen. If you go and look at an Unreal tutorial, I would say that mm, at least 90% of Unreal tutorials will have some fishing expeditions in them. As an example, let's say we want one of these vicious enemies to play a custom animation for us. Unfortunately for us, this particular 
enemy doesn't understand how to play a custom animation as it is. The reference we have to this actor doesn't understand a custom animation. It's not a thing that it even comprehends. In order to get this actor to play a custom animation, we have to go digging. We have to go down into their personal context to get their skeletal mesh. And then from there, we have to go into the skeletal mesh's personal context to get the animation blueprint. And the animation blueprint understands how to play an animation. We have to really, really go fishing pretty deep. We have to dig down and into the subcontext of the subcontext in order to find what we're looking for. This is considered pretty normal. You can see an example of it down here. See, Kate Marsh, Kate Marsh's skeleton, play a montage. This is something where if you're responsible for creating any sort of logic flow for your game, you're gonna wanna try and create it in such a way where there's a minimum of digging, but it's generally considered pretty normal to have at least some. You can see this as well in situations where the context doesn't survive some programming operation. For example, if you're doing a raycast, you're shooting at a bad guy, pseow, 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 and you want to know if you hit him, you might do a raycast. The raycast doesn't return an enemy. The raycast returns an actor. Now, an enemy is a type of actor. So what you have to do is you have to take that actor and cast it as an enemy. And if that works, you know that you hit an enemy and you know which enemy you hit. Again, that's not like instant. You have to figure out how to get the context you need. Well, you're not getting quite the right context. So you have to go fishing. You have to adapt the context until it matches what you need. Now, I'm not trying to tell you all of the ways that you can do this or examples of all of the ways it can happen. But those are two very common things that came up in tutorials when I was looking tutorials up, and I wanted you to be aware that what they're doing is they're going fishing. They're just looking for the data they need, and they're looking for that data by drilling down or adapting existing contexts. There are a lot more ways of going fishing. Just like going fishing, you could go fly fishing, or you could go deep sea fishing, or you could lay down some lobster traps, or, you know, whatever, right? As, as far as analogies go, I'm stretching it. But the point is, there are a ton of different ways to get and maintain references. As a newbie, a lot of people think in terms of just-in-time references, like, I need to open that door right now, so I better go get that door right now. But what they should be thinking of is, I'm going to need to open that door someday. It might be easiest to know what that door is before then, because, you know, it might be actually very hard to figure out what door it is later on. An example of that would be, let's say that you are spawning in random enemies. You could go out into the level, like if, if the player fires their gun and all of the enemies have to change status to alert, you could go out into the level and try and find every enemy class, but there might be some exceptions, like the boss, you don't want to set the boss to alert, or you know you don't want to set the, the turret to alert or whatever. There are lots of times when there's going to be a lot of annoying logic to sort out which enemies in the level you want to do what things with. So in cases like that, what you would do is when the enemy gets spawned, as part of the event where they get spawned, you add them to a list. And you just kind of maintain that list. When they get killed, you take them off the list. This means that you will always have a really fast and easy list of all of the enemies that you might want to use that you built. And you can control which enemies you want to add to that list for what reason. And because you're adding them at opportune moments, you don't have to go hunting. You can just kind of lean back and let your lobster traps fill up. I'm not sure if I have the shape of this in a comprehensible, you know, I'm not sure how well I'm illuminating this particular topic. I don't want to go out of my way to teach you a hundred different methods of doing this. It's one of those things where once you know how to think about it, it's pretty easy to start to look into how you do this. And if you find that you're having a really hard time getting something, you're probably fishing with the wrong lure or at the wrong time. As an easy example, right? If we open up this level blueprint again, 
I can simply list all of the enemies here on the level blueprint in a variable. I can just manually fill them up. Now our enemies are bench wood, flower flowers, ground mod garden, and ground garden bed. Those vicious, vicious enemies. And if I needed to, I could do anything I wanted with all of these enemies. I could just, you know, get all enemies and then do a four each and have them all explode violently, whatever I needed, right? But this isn't necessarily the best way to keep a list of all enemies, because when I'm spawning new enemies into the level algorithmically, who's doing that? If the level is doing the spawning, then sure, I can have a system where I am spawning a new enemy here on the blueprint, and when I do that, I add it to the list of all enemies. But if the enemy is responsible for adding itself to a list, well, the enemy is going to have a really hard time finding this variable because the enemy doesn't understand the context. The enemy is just an enemy. Having to go out into the level that it's in and then try and find the level blueprint and then try and find a specific variable on that specific level blueprint, that's really tough. So if you were trying to set this up, and you were having a really, really rough time figuring out how to add enemies to the list of all of your enemies, it might be because you're doing it backwards. It might be because you're doing it from the wrong direction. Sometimes it's very easy if you just flip the logic around. Maybe the person who's adding enemies is responsible for adding our enemies to the list, or maybe it's the enemies themselves. Which direction you go depends on how you've got it set up and what sort of fishing trip is harder. I don't want to get too into the weeds. I don't want to try and show you too many specific solutions because this isn't about specific solutions. This is about the concept. I don't want people to be confused by the concept of references. I know that a lot of people have come to me with questions like, I understood all of the logic that you did in that video, but how did you actually point it at that wall, or that enemy, or that spaceship system? This is how. You have to know how to go fishing. You have to know when to go fishing. You have to know how to obtain and maintain references. This is something that you'll learn over time. And once you know that this is something that is its own topic, and can be thought of as part you know, part of the overall programming experience or coding experience, even if you're not coding, it's still part of the game dev experience. Uh, you can lean on the engine's capabilities and understand which direction is upstream and which direction is downstream, and uh, just kind of sort out an easy solution that flows well for you based on what you need. And it'll come over time. You'll try a whole bunch of stuff. Some of it will work better than others, and you'll learn, I hope. Hmm. If you can think of a better way to teach this stuff, let me know down in the comments below, and uh, maybe we'll put together a better video some other day.